Welcome to week six of SLI, SACO Leadership Institute. What are we going to do today? Well, it's dedicated to professional development. What is professional development? Professional development is when we look at ourselves, we figure out what our strengths and weaknesses are, we continue to enhance our strengths, and we look at ways in which we can make our weaknesses either work for us or go away. We can mitigate those weaknesses, right? So what we're trying to do is become knowledgeable. Agenda today, we'll review and discuss the homework. We're going to review the principles, characteristics, and habits of leadership. We're going to do an introduction to management because leadership is different than management. The best uh, managers are leader managers, but management is a different skill set than leadership. It really is. Not incompatible, but different. Mistakes managers make, we're going to summarize and do some homework. So. We ask you to write one paragraph on how the SLI program has changed the way you think about leadership and management, and we're going to rewrite your personal vision and mission statement. We want you to write one paragraph on what you can do to be a better leader manager in your personal or professional life. Be prepared to share. All right? Those were the ones that were assigned to us. That is correct. So here we go. How have you changed your thinking? You, as a person. How have you changed your thinking? How have I changed my thinking? Yeah. Well, in a positive way, actually. I'm just going to read off what I wrote here from my paragraph. Please do. The SLI program has changed the way that I think about leadership and management by showing me that even though I'm very knowledgeable in all the products that we sell, I have the knowledge of everything here, that that alone is not enough to be a true leader or an actual manager. I have to actually uh, let down my shield, my wall of thinking I know everything and be open to learn more. Um, I have a lot more to learn about being an actual leader and a manager. So maybe take a step back actually look at myself on multiple different levels, uh, the way people perceive me, how I interact with other people, how I handle certain situations, interact with others, and just really my overall attitude. Um, one thing in particular that I've really um, enjoyed using on the floor is I'm enthusiasm, like being positive, just by simply like smiling, being energetic, and like, you know, it just, it makes a difference for me, but also it's contagious to the people around me. People seem to smile, it gets a little bit louder, and there's Everybody's happier and making more sales, and um, I love it. So awesome. Go. Awesome. It's very cool. You know, uh, you can't learn until you, you, you really get open, and that being open is really important. How about you? Okay, I'm going to read mine as well. Please do, Callie. Okay. Um, so how I change how I view management and leadership. Self-awareness and emotional intelligence are the two main concepts that have really been brought to light for me personally in this training class. Uh, the concept of self-awareness is something that I thought that I had understood, yet the realization that it is an ever-evolving, rotating door of inner reflection and being capable of detecting and admitting your flaws is not something that I'd ever really let sink in before. And that's where I guess true leaders separate themselves from the pack. The ability to recognize, admit, correct, and overcome one's flaws is a step that many don't have the will or want to do because of the difficulty of looking inside of oneself and not liking what you find, first of all then having to take the uncomfortable action of trying to change it. Right. And so, like I said, it's a choice. Right. And uh, a true leader must take into account not only his own flaws, weaknesses, and strengths, but also those of the people around them. In order to create and or run an efficient team, a leader must be able to not only identify, but strategize and implement an effective plan for each member of his team in order for the output to exceed that of those individuals separately. So this level of emotional intelligence takes practice, patience, and decisiveness. As for how it's changed my view of management and leadership, I think it has empowered me to take responsibility for my own success and failures and look inside myself for a solution to a problem before I look to place the blame for ans or to look for answers elsewhere. Very, uh, very cool. Mm. Very cool. What do you think? Isn't that cool? It's good. Yeah. You put thought into it. Excellent. But you, sir? So, Bru, I approach it in the sense of how SLI has changed my mindset. Is that correct? Yeah. 
right? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. You're a, you're a man of few words. It's okay. <laughs> Very direct. Leadership is a multifaceted role that involves dealing with different issues, all, in, all, in, all involving different approaches. Objective is good. Um, SLI is providing you with the education and tools to deal with the issues accordingly. Skills are, skill sets are like ammunition. The less I have, the less likely I am to hit my phone. It's a cool way of saying it. But you, Doug. Um, that's allowed made me think about the principles and components of leadership. It's opened up some doors to concepts of leadership. Uh, it has me thinking about the roadmap or a roadmap to becoming a better leader. That's allowed also opened my eyes to the fact that leadership skills can be acquired and developed rather than being a purely an skill. That's you know that's the big message. There are people who are wired. Are. Yeah, there are. It's like guitar even players. Not, you can, you can but even if you're not, you to the absolute maximum of your ability, absolutely. And there's some, some there's some been some amazing examples of that. Simon. SLI tell me by uh, learning how to prioritize because I've never really been good at that, and also teaching me that you know a true leader can never <laughs> stop learning because there's so many different types of leaders out there that I mean you can't just lead everybody just the same way. Not everybody can be led the same way. It's like nobody learns the same way. Right. There are five people in a class. There's probably five distinct different ways of learning. How about you, Vic? Uh, since attending the SLI, I realized that being in a position of management, people really pay attention to even the little decisions you do and look to you for guidance, um, even even if, you know, simple tasks to a, to a major task. Um, it just makes me, you know, want to take a, a look better and my decisions that I make here at the work environment to ensure that I don't lead anybody in the wrong direction or change their perception of me, so to speak. Cool. Did you get a chance to do your homework on? I was last week. <laughs> yeah. We're glad to have you back. Yes, sir. Okay. Excuse me, sorry. All right, how about you, sir? I just, I missed last week. Okay. All right. Okay, let's go to the next part of it, right? Have you changed your thinking as a person's leader? I like what I'm hearing. Thank you very much. As a manager, right? Here's a personal vision statement, right? And we uh, sort of explained the difference between vision and mission, right? Vision is essentially what you want to be when you grow up, right? I want to be a ballerina, right? I see myself being a ballerina. I want to be a golfer. I want to be owner of a company. I want to be uh, in the in the uh, in the political world, I want, I, want to, I want to consult with political campaigns. Whatever it is you see yourself doing, uh, I, I want to be uh, somebody involved with a charity, a nonprofit. Wh whatever that is, that's your vision. Then the mission is how to get there. Right? I want to be a professional golfer. Right? So uh, that's probably not a good vision for me, but it, let's say I had that vision. Then my plan would be maybe the first year work on the fundamentals, get myself a coach, practice every day, read all of the good literature about how to be a good golfer. Right? That might be a good mission, and then I could write a plan specific to that. Does that make sense? Any, any, any walk, anything you want to do, right? So this is mine. It's a personal vision example. I'm a valuable and valued manager and leader of my department with respect to my leadership and my peers. And you notice I put it in the I am Tense, right? Even though it's a vision, you put it in the you're there, right? I, I don't say I want to be, I desire to be, I sure would like to be someday. Gee, I hope someday I can fulfill that role. You say to yourself, I am. I am. I am. Right? Even though it's a future vision for yourself, right? Imagine uh, a vision being uh, some pastor decides to uh, uh, create a church in, a, in an undeveloped area. And this pastor has a vision for the church to serve so many people. And, and in the church, they have so many ministries, and they have different ways of helping people. Maybe there's an element that helps prisoners transition out of prison into, into a civilian life. There's people maybe in the church who work with military people who who are just coming out of active service and there's a place for them. Maybe there's, uh, you know, gay, lesbian, 
community and there's some sort of ministry, uh, ministering to those folks, right? That's a guy's vision. That's where he wants to be, right? He says, I am a pastor of a fully functional 12,000 seat church that has all of these ministries underneath me, right? So he envisions that. Then he says, okay, how do I get there? Right? I got to have people. I got to have land. I got to have a church. I have to have people who are willing to jump on board with me in my vision, right? So that's what a mission is, right? Does that make sense? Okay, I'm considered a knowledgeable and effective worker and leader with our patient to get things done. I'm an innovative and effective problem solver with a knack for crafting win-win solutions. And then your personal mission statement. I will seek advice and counsel from experienced leaders and managers. This is how I'm going to get there. How am I going to get there? I'm going to ask people to help me be a better leader. I'm going to continue to read and explore management and leadership materials information. I will model leadership principles, characters, habits, and values. Learn how to improve my management skill set and apply my learning to my job. Okay. <coughs> Rewrite your personal vision mission statement. Anybody get a chance to do that? Yeah, I did. Um, this is a, it's a lot harder than it seems, to tell you the truth, because, like, what do I want to do when I grow up? And I had to think about that. It, 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 you don't mind uh, me stopping just for a second, yeah. all right? He just put his finger on something important, and that is that, uh, this is not easy to do because you have to put some thought into it, right? But that's, that's the reason we ask you to do it because just the exercise of thinking about it helps you understand and clarify really what your desires and needs and, and those sort of things. Because we don't look at that very often, right? We, don't, we, don't, we, we kind of live on the surface sometimes. And this is asking us to dive a little deeper into the self pool and it, it takes some effort to do it. But the exercise really is beneficial. Yes. Go right ahead. And that's what I was going to get into because, I mean, I don't know. I mean, gosh, I'm 34 years old. What do I want to be when I grow up? Yeah. Um, so I went and thought about all the things that I like to do and whatnot. But one passion that I've always had is, um, like, coding, like, programming and whatnot. So, uh, you know, I want to change the way. I mean, it's going to be difficult to do, but it's possible to change the way that we actually – uh, share information with, you know, over the internet and actually how people write their programs and whatnot. There's got to be some way to make it more accessible to everybody else. So that's what I want to do. And when doing this and writing down the whole mission, um, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, it's not just, I mean, obviously I'm going to need to go uh, to school, but also the bottom line for me is, is something that my goal was even two years ago is to get a car. Like, I don't have a car anymore. Like something as simple as that. And like you said, if you want to be a golfer, you can say, I'm, you know, maybe I'll go do this and that. So just actually maybe start writing down a timeline of things that I need to do and to get my goals. It's like, I bought a, a whiteboard, you know, like one of these things and put in my apartment with the, with the expectation to write down things and do things. And it didn't turn into that. It just turned into something that was nothing. So having to have to do this actually put me back on point. Um, but getting a car is going to be, the first thing is a really great time management thing. Riding the bus, I'm sorry, it sucks. It sucks. It takes forever to get everywhere, and it's just ridiculous. So in order to do that, the first step is actually to pay off, like, all of my tickets. And to do that, I need it. I mean, there's a lot of things. I could go, I mean, I could probably go in forever, but um, sorry I'm all over the place with this. Like I said, this was something that I've never done before. And, uh, I, I mean, I got a lot of, lot of things into it, but... Okay, getting a car, pay off my tickets, do that, I need to start a payment plan, look into uh, reductions and whatnot with the actual, the reason why I got tickets. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to have to make more at my, at my workplace. The only way for me to do that is to, is to learn more and to, you know, I mean, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, do better. I mean, whatever. Um, and just create a balance, an actual routine. I don't have an actual routine every single day. I mean... I wake up, I go to work, whatever. I need to have more of a balanced routine. I need to balance out the, the spiritual, spiritual, mental, and physical aspects of my life that will actually create me, make me be able to do the things that I want to do. But as far as school goes, uh, looking into grants, uh, Pell Grants funding, surround myself in that environment, get to know people who have the same mindset and whatnot. Um, actually go to school and take the classes and take it seriously, study every day and night. Um, do it. Find a job in the actual field in my degree that I'm getting into, and like you said, develop relationships with people in there and put, you know, 
you know, positive in there, share, share, find people who share the same passion. And once you find the same people who you all have the same kind of goal, you can create a team and you can work forward to uh, changing the world. That's as far as I got right there. So I know that was all over the place. So there you go. That's, that's a start for me. So that's something. Well, it's a marvelous exercise that you go through, right? And, yeah. and uh, just like Callie's talking about, the self-awareness is something you have to sort of tap into. Yeah. Now where your job becomes is to distill all that down mm -hmm. to a manageable plan, right? Yeah, exactly. You, you can't do 16 goals. You can't yeah. do 16 goals. You do one or two or three, you can do plans for one or two or three, but you can't do 16. So you distill it down to a manageable plan. Exactly. And that's the way to go. So part of your homework is to rewrite so that rewrite and, it and rewrite it keep and it keep and coming it. to where. And you're, this is this is not a uh, uh, a project that really has uh, an end to it. Like like she said, it's a constantly evolving sort of thing. As you grow, as your perspective changes, uh, your mission statement changes slightly yeah. as well, right? What I did, yeah. What I noticed about that because it was just all I'm like, I mean, it's it's kind of overwhelming at first. Sure it so is. Like you're saying. Slow it down, break it down to one step at a time. So yeah. it really it's a great exercise to really get yourself on the right path to to getting to where you want to be. Mm -hmm. And it just it takes time. I mean, it really does. And you have yeah. to do it though. You have to do it. You can't just say you're going to do it. You have to actually do it to get out of plan. So. If you're an out of out of, out of shape, overweight per person, right, who hasn't exercised in 20 years, right, mm -hmm. and you say I want to be, you know, the state champion bodybuilder next year is probably overwhelming, right? Yeah. But you could think about getting into better f physical condition mm -hmm. and losing weight. So maybe just getting a good nutrition program yeah, is the first step. Mm -hmm. you, you get on a good nutrition program and start getting the right stuff in your body and then you exercise some, right? And then you can, you know, go from there. Yeah. But but you can't no. you can't go from A to Z. Exactly. You gotta go A, B, C, D, exactly. E, have all that oh, stuff. A lot of it to go, but it's yeah. Yeah. So your job is to distill it down. Exactly. Okay, um, I'll give you this, Jason, if you want it. That's just how I found it. I thought it was so overwhelming at first because I talked to you last week. So I found a template online to kind of help you answer some questions. And then once you answer the questions, it helps you to see where your goals were and then try and put it together. So mine's still a little bit all over the place. It's kind of separated into... Would you mind making sure you send that to me? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, it, okay, starts with my end goal, and this is just kind of ridiculous, but I was having a hard time starting, so I decided to lighten the mood. Okay, end goal, to be retired by the time I'm 45 so I can travel the world and never worry about money again. Plan of attack, marry rich. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. That's a plan. Yeah, it is so a plan. how do you, so really and then from there is how do you do that? Well you go go find the people who are rich. Yeah, exactly. And then you need to look at the women who attract those men and emulate those women so that you can have some of the that happens all the time. My girls from my hometown, Beeville, Texas, had that as a goal and did it. I know two girls who are just like that. I know, go right here. I know it's funny. I know it's funny. <laughs> from you though. Yeah. Um okay, so then I got serious. Uh, what my real goal there is eventually is to travel the world to every continent in search of enlightenment by way of cultural enrichment, life experience, and the pursuit of happiness. So on a smaller goal than that, what I went to school for and what I would love to do is to work in an embassy in some Latin American country and actually use my degree. I now realize that, and having tried to do this before, and it being a lot more complicated with visas and things, that I thought I need to go back to school. So in order to go back to school, I need to make more money. In order to make more money, I need to be prepared for each day and do my best at my work. In order to be prepared for each day, I need to plan ahead. And that's kind of all I've gotten as far as that goes. And then for my vision statement, though, something that I feel like will help me get prepared for each day, sorry. Right? is, okay, and I just added eyes to the beginning once I saw yours, so it might not make a lot of sense, but I find mental and emotional solitude and enrichment through meditation and yoga. I work not only to enrich, but challenge and intrigue myself. I make time for the relationships I value. I create a budget whose restraints I live within, try and eliminate frivolous spending. Um, I make time for things that matter, equal fun relationships, and find ways to help enrich them. I make every moment and interaction matter. It may change your life. 
I try to always make a positive impression on the people I meet. I end each day with a smile, knowing I am happy and loved. And here was another question that's on the template. I haven't figured out how to implement it into the plan yet, but I just thought it was a really powerful question. When your life is ending, what will you regret not doing, seeing, or achieving? And I'm not sure that I've totally, fully answered it yet, but I will regret not seeing every place I wanted to see, letting everyone I love know how much I love them, and not living my life to the potential I know it has. Most of all, I will regret not following my heart and matters of love instead of my head. And that's all I've got so far. That's uh, really cool, uh, Kelly. Let, let, let me uh, do a real editorial, quick editorial comment. Um, who's reading the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People? Somebody reading that, right? Okay. So one of the, the one of the uh, uh, habits is begin with the end result in mind. And one of the exercises he takes you through is projecting yourself out to the day of your funeral, way in the future, and having lived your life a certain way. Imagine what people would say about you based on how you lived your life. Weigh that against what you would like to have them say, right? And then sort of congratulate yourself for having an opportunity to live the rest of your life in a way to get the responses you'd like to get at the end of your life. And it's the same exercise, more or less, but it's just sort of done in a different way. So you got to the day of your funeral and say, what are they saying about me? It's a rotten, no good SOB. He cheated on his wife. He was drunk all the time. He beat his kids. He stole money from everybody. He was awful. Like, do you want to live your life like that? Or... My dad was the funniest guy I've ever met. He, he was a great teacher. He, he, he really tried to, to reach and teach people. And let's tell all these funny stories. So I kind of live my life that way, you know, with my kids. But, but mostly my kids, right? Uh, mine's Excellent very, job. Mine's very brief, guys. Just Man, a few words. Very summarized. I'm in a position of leadership because people respect and believe in me. I will let my moral compass be my guide, and my skill set will lead me to success. Okay. Is that sort of your vision statement, mission statement? Both. Okay. I mean, uh, <clears throat> it's, it's excellent. It's but n now what you got to do is write a mission statement that sort of becomes a plan for you to get where you need oh, okay. to be. That's yeah, because a vision statement is what I want to be when I grow up, and the mission is how do I get there? Right. How do you get there? Okay. Hey, Doug? Okay, I, I, I wasn't clear. I, I didn't realize it was vision and mission. So okay. I am committed to my personal and professional growth and success. I will do everything in my power to ensure that the actions I take will benefit the company, my coworkers, friends, and family, and myself. I will do it with integrity and with the best of intentions. Uh, I will coach and counsel with respect and concern for those I'm responsible for. I love that. I love that. That's really a mission statement to a large extent. And then, then you have like goals within the <coughs> mission statement to develop a plan for it. Very good. Time. Uh, I put. I got through, through these classes. I will get a better grasp on the type of leader I am, and how to properly lead uh, the agents out on the floor. In the workplace out there, I will lead my team to the success, the best of my ability, as well as give them the proper tools to be successful. And in personal life, I would like to. I would be getting more, spending more time on my writing. Like I used to. Okay. All right, so uh, I think you need to rewrite that and really, you know, w come up with a vision. What do I want to do when I grow up, right? right? Okay. You know, I, I want to be the best manager that's ever been at SATCO. I mean, that could be your vision right. for yourself. Well, what I want to do is in the book I'm reading, it talks about how uh, you better get that right, just write your own obituary. That how you like to be remembered. Alfred, that's how Alfred Noble did that. His, his brother died, and he woke up the next morning to read the obituaries, and they, they wrote an obituary on him instead of his brother, and they were comparing him to all the dynamite he was making, war causes, and that's when he realized, yeah, that's not how he wants to be remembered. Is that cool or what? Yeah. It's the same, the same thing Covey's talking about, you right. know. It's, we have an opportunity, right? We have an opportunity to live our life in a way that will dictate what people say about us when we're gone. Leave a legacy, right? right. Live, love, leave a legacy. It's really cool. Vic? All right. My similar to last week, uh, 
My vision is to create a better everyday life for people. That's my vision. My mission statement is um, continue to provide the wide variety of home entertainment options for the everyday person. Um, I can do that because I'm, I'm loyal, I'm hardworking, dedicated to do whatever it takes to become a better leader manager, and I continue to try to learn something new every day. Okay. All right. You guys want to? Sure. I also don't have the, the vision or the one that's set with the goal or what my end result is, but um, in short, I'm a great salesman. I am a scholar of fairness and always will care for people and business. My incentive is that I value the people's lives and to learn of and from peers and experienced leaders. It's got a little mission quality in it, and it's got a little affirmation quality. My challenge to you is rewrite it. Think of, you know, a three- to five-year vision for yourself, or a lifelong vision, whatever you want to do, and then a mission that supports that. So that's good. It's good affirmation. It's got some mission qualities in there. How about you, Khalil? Uh, I, I would. You, all right. And how about you? You didn't do it? Okay. All right. Re rewrite your personal uh, vision statement. And with one paragraph, what you can do to be a better leader manager in your personal and professional life. Be prepared to share. Did you do that? Yeah. Um, well, to, okay. To be a better manager or leader in my personal life, I've been using, um, I've been reading a lot more. And you told us to read the four agreements. So I printed uh -huh. that thing out, actually, and I read that. And it really makes a big freaking difference. Isn't it a terrific book? Yeah. It's only 10 pages. I mean, you can read this thing every single day if you want yeah. to get it stuck in your head. Yeah. Um, it's 10 pages. And you can dive shallow, Yo, you or you can dive deep. deep. Yeah. yeah, I know. And um, this is not very, very deep, but it says, by being impeccable with my word, uh, not taking things personally, making, you know, don't make assumptions, and always doing my best, um, I've started a path to uh, reach my goals every single day. Uh, I've noticed that things that have been hindering my growth as a leader um, have started, wait, are, are going away little by little with every step that I take. Um, especially, the main thing I've been doing right now is, being impeccable with my word, having integrity with my words, telling when I say something, I'm going to do it. Some, I mean, sometimes if somebody says, uh, hey, man, so you're going to come over afterwards, we're not, instead of saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll be there, and then not showing up, that's that's not being impeccable with my word. Instead, I'd be like, you know, I, I probably won't be able to make it. I apologize. If I can, I'll let you know, but I'm going to let you know up front. I'm probably not going to be able to make it. That way, you know, they're not expecting you to. I just, it really. It, that's a little thing, right? Yeah. But but that keeping a promise means something to, to people. That person, exactly. Right. You remember what we talked about last week, where Callie has a little account for me, and I got to put stuff in that yep. emotional investment, and in, in that there, yeah. you you just withdrew. Hey, I'm going to come over and see you at seven o'clock. Yeah, I didn't. You didn't show up. Yeah. Now you get a reputation for not showing, right? Exactly. Um, it's especially being um, doing what I'm going to say. I'm going to do, realizing realizing the force and power of my words. And the following through is helping me to develop relationships and deposit multiple, multitudes of positive energy into each and every one of them. Positive energy is that capital investment, exactly. that emotional investment, right? It's a big deal. I just, it's, it's a great relationship builder. I, listen, that book, Seven Habits book, these are books that will change your life if you allow them to. Kelly? Okay. Uh, I feel the best way for me to become a better leader and manager of my business and personal life is to find a routine and find balance. A routine helps you to develop good habits, which will ultimately lead to more good habits. And with that comes a sense of self-assuredness and inner peace in your life. With the now diminished stress levels you've created by developing this routine, you've freed up more time for your personal growth and for fun, enjoyment, mm -hmm. etc. That personal growth will be obvious to others and may influence them as well. And either way, these are the building blocks of success for me personally. Now it's just time to implement them. That is really cool. Now, all of this works, all this stuff uh, that, we're t that we're learning all kind of works together. Remember last week we started about staying in quadrant two, you know, doing the planning, the prevention, doing the fire prevention, doing the systems work, all that kind of stuff in two so that you don't have so much chaos in one uh -huh. so that you have more peace in your life. I mean, they're all, they're all kind of connected together. It's very good, Kelly. Thanks for doing your homework. Cool. 
Very cool. Did you did you write one? I was looking for it. It's not in this notebook. So okay. Doc? Okay. Um, uh, to become a better leader and manager, I need to get more organized and get my priorities straight. I need to spend as much time in quadrant two as possible. I also need to work on my interpersonal skills so that my interactions with my coworkers more accu accurately reflect my beliefs and values. That is so cool. That's so deep. We could spend an entire class talking about that. Because, so, you know, uh, we have this little thing in us, so we judge authenticity all the time. Is this person really authentic? You know, does this person really believe what he's saying? <laughs> you know, and the closer you are to what your internal value system is to what you communicate, the more authenticity you have. And the more authenticity you have, the cooler you are, I think. How about you, buddy? I put, uh, uh, help me become a better leader. I need to learn how to manage my time a whole lot better and definitely become more organized. And I probably need to learn how to speak uh, more clearly in groups of people because I always tend to get nervous. Mm -hmm. There's a whole group of people I got to speak in front of. Mm -hmm. I, I love it when things come together uh, in a couple of slides. <laughs> You're going to see how all this comes together, you know. I don't want to pat myself too much on the shoulder, but I love it when things come together. How about you, Vic? Professional level, I very seldom take anything personally, very seldom. But I still struggle with my inner personal relationship skills right. with, with doing that because it's such a part of us, you know, and it comes from childhood and the baggage we bring forward. But on a professional level, I think it's much easier to accomplish, you know, it really is. Okay, anybody else want to jump in on that topic? All right. Have you changed your thinking as a person, as a leader, as a manager, personal mission statement? I can be a better leader. All right, leadership, right? Real quick, Kelly. What is leadership? Leadership is the ability to lead, the ability to guide, direct, or influence. How do you know your leader? How do you know your leader? Uh -huh. If people follow you. Look behind you. All right, real quick. Leadership principles, know yourself and seek improvement. Next one. Uh, know your business, products, services, processes. Know your employees, direct reports, team members, and look out for their welfare. All the time. How about you, sir? Hello? Know your employees' strength and weaknesses and make it make their success your priority. That's you, Mark. Keep your employees, staff, team informed. Correct, right, Corey. How about you? <clears throat> know your set principles. Set the example. All right. How about you? Make sure the task is understood, supervised, and how about you, sir? Train your people as a team. How about you? Make sound and timely decisions. All right, go back up here. Uh, develop a sense of responsibility among your subordinates. How about you, sir? Employ your people in accordance with their capabilities. Okay. Seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. All right. Leadership characteristics. Leadership characteristics. Characteristics are what you model, right? Principles are what you, you base your life on, but... Uh, uh, characteristics of what you model, right? Justice, fairness, right? I've heard somebody say today that they're really uh, inherently that's important to you, right? Judgment, dependability. Talk to your point of, uh, you know, somebody says, hey, you're going to come over this evening. we got some people going to play poker. Oh, yeah, man, I'll be there. What, what time? Seven? And you never show up, right? Yeah. Decisiveness, really important, making a decision. Tact, integrity, enthusiasm, yeah. it's, it, it, it's infectious, bearing, unselfishness, courage, knowledge, loyalty, endurance. And then the habits, Stephen Covey, go ahead. Be proactive. All right, what's that mean? To do it ahead of time. Yeah, if you see something that needs to get done, you go do it, all right? How about you, Down? What proactive means? No, what, begin oh, with begin, the, Okay, begin with the end in mind. What does that mean? Um, you're going to be really focused on what you want. 
vision and mission statement. Like yeah. You, you have to follow your own plan or else. Yeah, vision, vision, vision and mission are part of begin with the end result in mind. What do you want to look like? What, 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 you know, what do I do? What, who do I want to be when I grow up? Right? Then how do I get there? What's next? Put first things first. What does that mean? I don't know. Tell me. I'm sorry. I'm just going to be honest with you. Like, I wish you would have had the win-win one. I could tell you what that is. Okay. <laughs> first things first are the important things in your life, right? Quadrant two, okay, right? Priorities. Quadrant two is when you do your planning, is when you do your uh, prevention, develop systems, you're building relationships. You're doing the physical aspects, the mental emotional aspects of your life so that you're able to have gas in your engine when you come to work. So you're able to have the energy you need to have to do what you need to do. So you're able to have the plan in place to accomplish your goals, right? And uh, we are uh, always dealing with urgent things. And sometimes urgent things aren't important things. So the difference between an urgent thing and an important thing is apply the five-year rule to it, right? If it's going to be important in five years, it's probably important, right? You didn't pick out the trash today. That's urgent. That's not important, right? Right? That's urgent. That's not important because in five years, what does it matter if she took the trash out today or not? You hear what I'm saying? But something important, right? You broke your best friend's heart today. That's important, right? Because that is going to matter in five years. Because if you don't get that fixed, what's going to happen? You're not going to have a friend, right? So that's important. You see the difference? Okay, think win-win. Think about how to succeed and what you're trying to do and how everyone else around you can succeed as well. Yeah, we have a tendency to want to win the fight, you know, but that, that's not the best thing. How about you, Marco? Most people do what? Assume. No, they do the back. Oh. They do the reverse of this, right? right? It's really important to me, Kalel, that you understand how I'm feeling today. Do you hear me? It's really critical that you understand how I'm feeling. You get it? And Kalel's going, I don't care what you're feeling. <laughs> right? Because I got some stuff I'm thinking about, right? So if I say, Kalel, what's going on in your life today, brother? Understand where he's coming from, right? It's a lot easier for me then at some point to say, hey, I'd like to share something with you. Does that make sense? Synergize. What does that word mean? Synergize. Synergize is like it's sort of a dynamic interaction between you and what's going on. Yeah. It's in synergy. It's yeah. Wisdom of crowds, right? You may be a smart guy. You may have brilliant ideas, but you add somebody else to your team to look at your ideas, and all of a sudden your idea's better, right? We're going to do A, B, C, D, E, and F. And then Callie looks at it and goes, wow, he's cool, but maybe you could do it a different way. And I'm going, yeah, that's cool. How about you, Simon? Sharp and soft. What does that mean? Always have the, I mean, you got to get the knowledge perfect, you know, to make the the task or whatever needs to be done. you got to just get it perfect. Yeah. We're running out of time real quick, and I want to cover some other things, but sharpen the saw, right? I'm a pretty competitive guy, <laughs> right? Let's say Vic's a very competitive guy. Lynn walks in and says, I'm going to give 10000 bucks to the guy who can cut through this 20-inch log first. So Vic goes, I'm going to kick his butt. He's an old guy. I'm going to kick his butt, right? So he jumps up, cranks up that chainsaw, Callie jumps on his shoulder, Doug jumps on his shoulder, Simon jumps on his shoulder, and he starts cutting. Me, I go sit in the corner, open the case, take out a, a, a file, and I start sharpening the saw. I take the awl out and I awl it. I, I tighten up the chain. I do the maintenance work to prepare for the hard work I'm going to do. About halfway through, Vic's saw is stuck. So more people jump up and down on his shoulders, right? Pushing down, pushing, pushing. Go, go, Vic, go, Vic. I get up, I go, brrrm, Old man wins. Why? Saw was sharp, right? Saw was sharp. 
Leadership versus management. Leadership is doing the right things. I mean, really, that's what it is. It's doing the right things. Management is doing things right. And leader managers do right things right. Now, management. We're going to talk about the definition, the characteristics, and the common mistakes that managers make. How do I know they're common mistakes? Why are they on this list? Anybody want to know? Common mistakes because they happen all the time. They're common mistakes because I made them. <laughs> all these mistakes, I made them all. <coughs> definition. What's the definition, Callie? A manager is someone who manages people, resources, processes, systems in an effective way that produces the results needed and achieves the strategic and tactical goals set by the organization. All right, so the manager is responsible for getting things done. Making sure people show up for work, making sure that all the mechanics of the job are, are ready to go, that the fuel's in the gas tank, that the all's in the engine, right? That's what managers do. Now, what's management? Management is the organizing and controlling of the affairs of a business or a sector of a business, or the act of handling or controlling something successfully, such as crisis management or the skillful handling or use of something such as resources. All right, everybody understand what management is? It's different than leadership. And you can be a really good manager and not have a leadership skill to your name. And there are a bunch of them out there. They don't have good interpersonal relationship skills. They don't care about other people. They only care about what they need to do to get done. And they're very good at what they do. And if you go to some of the state jobs that are here in Austin, you'll see a lot of managers. All right, there's a ton of them out there. What are characteristics, right, of a really good manager? Effective planner. Hey, if you don't know where you're going, you can't get there. Right? If you don't know where you're going, you don't know how to get there, right? Good people skills. This gets into leadership a little bit, but good managers have good people skills. Goal-oriented, right? Get something done. Able to manage people, resources, systems, processes. Organize, what we talk about, organization. At its very core, organization is extremely important to a good manager. Right? The more organized you are, the less disorganized you are. The more organized you are, the less disorganized you are. Disorganization creates chaos, misunderstandings. It, it, it's not productive. Organization is productive. Having all your ducks lined up. For example, if you guys walked in here and we didn't have any handouts for you, we didn't have any slides for you, Jerry and I are discussing what we're going to give in the class, right? What do you think I should cover in the class, Jerry? I don't know. What do you talk about leadership? Well, we talked about leadership last week, you know. It's not effective and it doesn't give me any confidence. But if you walk in and we appear to be organized, so what does that make you feel? Like some thoughts have been given to this. This is probably good material. You had it hand out. That seems like a cool thing, right? Those are just little organizational things you can do to be more effective as a manager. Make sense? Knowledgeable. This goes back to leadership. Know yourself, know your people, know your stuff. Consistent. Hey, today, no glasses. No. Tomorrow, glasses. Wednesday, one glass, <laughs> one eye open. Thursday, no beards. Monday, beards. You're so confused, you don't know if you're coming or going. You're supposed to wear glasses, cut your beard, shave your head. You don't know what to do. But if the manager's consistent every day in what they say and how they say it, it's so much easier to work for that guy. Don't you think? Reliable. Reliable. And we could talk about reliability till the cows come home. But basically what this means is you are a reliable person. You're there when you say you're supposed to be there. It's really about keeping your promises. You're there every day. You're consistent in the way you handle things. You're just a reliable person. People love that. Able to effectively communicate. Right? It is real hard to be a good manager without being able to communicate. Hey, uh, you got to get that stuff done today. Make sure you get this stuff done, okay? On my desk by three. Okay? Good. What stuff? Right? The stuff you talked about Monday when you told me not to wear glasses, and the stuff you talked about on Tuesday when you told me I couldn't wear glasses. What stuff? All right? So being able to effectively communicate is important. Able to effectively conclude and complete assigned tasks. 
A manager who never brings the sheep home, a manager who never brings the bacon home, a manager who doesn't complete tasks, usually doesn't stay a manager for a very long period of time. So you really have to be goal-oriented task order to get things done, right? Ability to multitask. I have never, ever been able to focus on a single project. I can't do it here, right? I try to get something done, what happens? A door, right? Marco comes in. <laughs> he, you know, he needs me, right? He needs Jerry. Jerry can't. We've got to multitask, right? Be able to fit, fit, effectively delegate. There's none of us good enough to be able to do everybody's job. No, none of us are. We're not, I, I, we can't do all the jobs. If you're the captain of a large ship, can you run the laundry? Can you make the beds up? Can you cook the meals? No, the only thing you can do is command a ship. That's what, you, that's what your job is. And then you have to delegate to the other people on the ship in terms of what their new responsibilities are. The engine guy has to make the engine run. The head chef has to make the food work. The guy who's responsible for navigating has to be able to get us to navigate. The person who is responsible for keeping fuel in the ship has to keep fuel in the ship. All of those things work together to keep a ship afloat and going where it needs to go, right? Does that make sense? Common mistakes. Okay. Why don't I even talk about mistakes? Because they happen. Because they happen and because it really tells you how you impact people, right? Now, first mistake. There's 33 we're going to talk about. Three today. First mistake is failure to plan. The second mistake is making assumptions. And the third mistake is accepting explanations at face value. And we'll talk more about this in a second. Those are the three mistakes. Roundtable discussion. It's, it's, in your, it's in your slides right there. All right, seek first to understand and be understood. We talked about that a little bit. What's that mean? Uh, well, we usually flip flop it. We do that. But um, to first try and understand the situation before you just go in guns blazing and try right. to get your point of view heard. Right. Callie, listen to me. It's really important you understand how I feel today. I don't know what happened in your life, right? All kinds of things could happen in your life, and, and 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 I need to understand that before you, you know. It's a good it's a good principle. Okay, I got to go fast because we're running out of time. Failing to plan. Why is this a management mistake? Why is it a common mistake? <laughs> it's a quadrant two activity, guys. It's a quadrant two activity, right? And we're so freaking busy in quadrant one that we, we don't do this, right? I worked for a company for 10 years, Dank History in Florida, went from $20 million a year to $2.5 billion a year. $20 million to $2.5 billion, huge growth. My job every day was to lay tracks for an incoming train, coming a million miles an hour down the track. Only thing I had time to do was lay the track. Right? Me and all the managers, lay the track, lay the track, lay the track, lay the track. Because if you didn't lay the track, you're going to have a train wreck for sure, right? So, you know, how much planning do we do? Not much. We just hope the hell the track material was there. Not much. Cause we hope we didn't run off a cliff down here, right? But if you don't take the time to plan, your entire operations would come to, to a grind and halt. The train's going to come down here, and it's not going to be the material to lay the track. What do you do then? Better have a way of communicating with that guy to get him to slow down. That's part of the plan. We better have lots of steel, right? That's part of the plan. You better have a lot of water because these guys are, right? That's part of the plan. Got to have hammers. Part of the plan. We got to have those spikes. Part of the plan. We got to rotate people in now. You can't have somebody swinging a hammer all day, right? Part of the plan. So to take the time to plan about it, then you don't have these horrible things that happen to you in terms of train wrecks. And it's the managers who don't take the time to plan. Let me bring it down to a real personal note here with the people on the floor. If you, as a manager, don't ensure that your folks every single day have a plan to be successful, they won't. 
If they don't have a specific plan to be successful, they won't. And whose responsibility is, is it? It's really theirs, but you have to inspire them to do that. That needs to be a part of what you do every day. And you have to have a plan for yourself. How do I become a better manager? You've got to plan it. How do I become more knowledgeable? You've got to plan it. How can I get more sales out of my people? You've got to plan it. All right? There's training and support and coaching and, and reinforcement. All of those things have to come into play, but you've got to plan it. If you don't plan it, what happens? Train wreck, right? Okay, so what does that mean to you, Doug? Yeah. It's, it's sort of like putting, it's, it's sort of like uh, start with the end in mind. Yeah. Kind of thing, you know, you kind of see where you want to go and yeah. figure out how to get to work backwards. Yeah. But you guys understand that the plan also is a communication tool. Brew has a plan because I know his plan. It's in writing. I know what he's doing. I have a plan. It's in writing. He knows what I'm doing. He, I know what my role is in his plan. He knows what his role in, in my plan is. Jerry and I talk all the time, and we write plans for the training department. When are we going to have training? Who are we looking for to have training? How can we improve training? How do we do that? How do we find time in our day to do that? I mean, that's all part of the plan. So, can you see where planning becomes an issue on a personal basis? Well, I don't plan. I mean, on a personal basis. Um, well, yeah. I mean, pretty much like we said. I mean, you if you don't have a plan every single like trying to put it into words. Your mission statement, get your tickets paid off. Yeah. That's a plan. You need to have a plan. There you go. I mean, uh, yeah. you take this step by step. You don't yeah. just go from A to Z. My, my, my hope is to someday have enough money to pay my tickets I off. I hope I will, but how am I going to make that happen? Yeah. First thing I first sure hope that somebody that walks by and drops a $10,000 check in the mail. Lands in my lap. Yeah, that's not, that's that's not what I'm plan. hoping for. It's a terrible plan. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a good plan. No. It's a terrible right? plan. So, so you got to have a plan, right? It, but if you don't take yourself out of quadrant one long enough to plan, then the big train coming down the track is going to run out of track, run off a cliff, run out of gas, whatever it is, it's not good, right? right? Can you clearly see why that's one of the mistakes, the common mistakes, right? Number two, making assumptions. Why is this so critical to a manager? Because you can assume all you want, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. And if you make an assumption, then you're going to be disappointed most of the time. Yeah, it, it, let's say that people aren't coming to work, right, on time. And you just make an assumption. They're lazy. They don't like their jobs. They don't want to, they don't want, they don't want to be successful, right? Those are all these assumptions that we make that sound like perfectly legitimate assumptions until you find out that none of those assumptions are true. Seek to understand. You got to seek to understand, right? So w why is making assumptions such a critical mistake that managers make? Well, they're not. Well, like we said, you're not understanding the situation or communicating with any person as well. I mean, uh -huh. somebody comes to let's say Austin comes in late. I'm like, oh well, you probably had a rough night or something like that. Or whatever. if I would take the time, like, hey man, like what's going on, like. You were late today. Tell me what's going on. You know, and that way, yeah. you say, you know, whatever. It was something that really actually happened. I'm like, okay, like yeah. now I understand your, your situation instead of yeah. just assuming. When you assume things, everybody knows that you make an ass out of you and me. Yeah. Basically, so you don't ever want to make assumptions. Yeah. We're not getting enough district TV sales. They don't have the product knowledge. No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. Could be. Could not be. But don't. Make all of your plans based on that. You've got to figure out what the real problem is. What's the issue? Well, I know what the issue is. We got rotten salespeople. No, <laughs> no. not necessarily. We may have one or two. Salespeople say we got rotten management. Got rotten management, right? It, which is not an assumption that's valid either. Well, mostly not valid, right? <laughs> mostly not valid, right? So making assumptions is a real critical mistake. Can you see, Kalel, why making assumptions? is a real killer, right? Yeah, it could be a motivated killer, you know. Uh, it's uh, like accusing, you know, someone for something that's not valid. 
Which is one of my pet peeves. Yeah. You accuse me of something that I wasn't intended to do or never even thought of, and I get pretty irritated yeah, about it's that. definitely right? not the approach that you want to use when you're in that type of position where yeah. you're, you're looked at as a leader. Yeah. It, it, if I just say, make assumptions about you, Cole, just make uh, just five or six assumptions, just boom, 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 and not a single one of them is correct, and I manage you based on those assumptions, how much respect are right. you going to have for so me? Now, I can't respect you. Because, All right. This guy doesn't have any, doesn't have a brain in his head to start with. Sure the hell hadn't taken the time to get to know me. There's no respect there. There's no emotional currency in that account, all right? Can you see how important that is? Why you want to avoid that? Accepting explanations at face value. I have had my head and my butt handed to me on more than one occasion because I took an action based on something a salesperson or sales manager told me or customer. Right? I did that. Does that fall under the trust but verify? <laughs> yeah. Well, if it falls in there, there's two sides to every story, yeah. right? So Callie comes in, she says, uh, uh, I overheard so and so say so and so. And I go, You know what? Make an assumption, right? These are related. I was thinking that guy was doing that. And I go in there and I jump, I rip his head off, I rip both his arms off, I rip all his feet off. And then I come to find out, he didn't do it. Right? So you look like a what? You look like an idiot, right? And you remember the illustration of the three guys with the elephant? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. Hey, it doesn't mean you, you've been lied to. It just means that the explanation you got was from what? Their point of view, right? They said, I had an experience this little ropey thing with a little hair on the end. So that's my experience. And then you go find out that another guy has experience with this big wall thing, a leathery wall. And then over here, you got the, another person has experience with this trunk thing, you know, with the smelly holes. And then you got this, you got this big ear thing, you know, that flappy thing. Well, you put them all together as a manager, you got a picture of an elephant. If you just go with the, oh my God, we got a long tail with the, with, with, oh my God, we got to we got to gear up for that, you know. It'll get you into trouble, and I, I'm not going to say that salespeople uh, make it a, a habit of overtly lying to you, but I will say that it's been my experience that it happens on occasion, that somebody will tell you something that's not correct. You take an action based on that, and you lose the respect to everybody on your team. Right, because most of the people on the team know it's BS, right? But you're out there doing what you need to do, thinking you're solving a problem. So what do you have to do as a manager? It takes time. You got to go out there, take all the emotion out of it. Kelly comes in and says the cat is black, right? So I go, okay, I can either accept that explanation at face value, or I can go over here and say, what color is the cat? It's just the cat's yellow. So I got a black cat issue and a yellow cat issue. How can that be the same cat? Then I go to Marco and I find out it's not the same cat. Totally different cat. By taking the time to dig in, dig down, and find out what the explanations are, listen to both sides before you make a decision. Right? And one of the mistakes is going with your biases. Because right? there's people you like and there's people you don't like. And you have to be fair to the people you don't like because they're just as valid to your success as the person you do like. And you know what? The person you don't like has a valid point of view, and you better listen, right? So you have to take the biases out, take the emotions out, and do what you need to do. Okay, we talked about principles, characters, and habits, management, leadership roundtable, homework. Write a one paragraph on each common mistake we discussed today. Answer why, in your opinion, each is on the list. Number two, write one paragraph on what you can do to improve the performance of your team, starting with yourself. Number three, there is no three, so those two. <laughs> What's next? Uh, Think about three common mistakes we covered today and why they're so 
they're on the list and how you can avoid them. And, uh, you know, we'll talk more about that. Thank you very much for coming, guys. Appreciate it.